should be good. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. So um, nice to see all you here. We got almost 40 of you so far. So that's a good thing. Um, anybody have any questions or anything I need to know about or any questions as to what to expect or anything at all? Okay. All right. Then the next thing, like I said, there's still a bunch of things we got to cover. So uh, next up on the list of topics is something called area bounded. Oops, can't see area bounded. Uh, another way of thinking of this is um, area between curves. So we're going to start to, uh, it's not terribly hard. Uh, we got to get the idea down. And then once you got it, not too bad. Um, so before we start doing this with actual, uh, actual problems, let's just make a little sketch here. Let's see if we can make sense of it. So if I tell you, okay, here's a graph and colors are probably helpful here. So let's say that the blue graph is, uh, I don't know, whatever, we'll call that f of x. And then the purple graph is g of x. And if I ask you to find the area between the curves, what's the plan? Even though we don't have any math to do here, what would be the act? What's the setup, though? What's the plan? So would you find the area under the, the f of x and then find the area of g of x and then- How do we find the area? You do the, um, the thing. Riemann sum? Uh, Riemann sum is definitely an option, but uh, they, these are gonna have formulas attached to them. So not necessarily a Riemann sum, but just an, the word I was trying to go with is just an integral. So, cause remember when we integrate something, that's the area under the curve, it's that total amount. So if we're looking for the area between these two curves, that being the part there that I'm shading, the general plan is going to be to find the area from whatever, this is just from A to B for our blueprint purpose. So the area from A to B, now I'm gonna word this a little differently. Instead of calling this F of X, cause these letters could change at any time. We're gonna say of the top curve, whatever that one is, right? It could be, cause it could be called whatever. So it's gonna be the integral with your bounds of the top curve minus the integral with your bounds of the bottom curve. And in this case, top was F and bottom was G, that could always change. But does that idea make sense? Not that bad, right? Okay. All right, so let's put Wait. some. What's up? Is the top curve the shaded part or? No, no, no. So, okay, let's do it this way. So, um, all right, so this is putting them all together. Let's look at this. Okay, so here's, I'll do my best to recreate this. There's the top one and there's the bottom one. So if I find the area under the top curve, that's going to give me all of that. And if I find the area under the bottom curve, that's going to give me that. So if you kind of picture these two sliding together, remember, I was looking for the area between these two curves. So if you kind of smush this together, the area between these two curves is going to be the entire area of the top. Like, let's just make a number up. Let's say that this area, I don't know, is 10. Totally making that up. This area is 10. And then this area over here is three. So then if you see up here, remember the whole thing is 10. And then this little guy down here is three. So hopefully it would make sense that the area between them is seven. And in other words, to find that that's the area of the top curve minus the area of the bottom curve or integration is the correct name of saying that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so that's the plan. And then 
all we're going to do is just now do the math that goes along uh, with it. So with that said, let's try. Let me get you a problem. Okay, so important part here is that you've got your functions picked out and you also know what we're talking about, where, um, where we're going from. We're going from zero to two only. Okay, so what do you think, what's the first thing we gotta do? What's the first thing we gotta figure out? Uh, should we take it under the integral um, symbol? And provide we're definitely, yeah, we're definitely gonna be doing some integral symbols here. But what do we need to? What do I need to identify first? I need to identify which curve is on the top and which one's on the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not always f and g. We don't know what's what here. So if you know visually what these look like, you might get there. Uh, but remember, these are non-calculator problems, and in the not too distant future here, we're going to be starting to do stuff with calculators. Um, so for right now, though, this is no calculator. So how could I kind of piece together which one's on top using the information they give me? You could plug in the bounds. Yeah, exactly. So I would just plug in each bound and see what we get. So if I plug in zero, you're gonna get four, you're gonna get zero. Sounds like this one's on top. Let's plug in two. That's gonna give me eight and also eight. Those intersect, so that's okay. But which one was on top to begin with? It's going to be this one, right? So you don't need to sketch it out, but just for right now, so you can get an idea of what's happening. 2x plus 4 is a line, right, that starts at 4, and it heads on up that way. And x to the third from 0 to 2 is going to look something like that from 0 to 2. So then you're looking for the part that's in the middle. Now, do you need to sketch these? No. It's just so that we make sure we're on the same page. So we know which one's on top. We know which one's on the bottom, okay? And then to find the area between these curves, it's integral of the top minus integral of the bottom. Now, before I send you on your way to do this, let me teach you something to save you a little bit of, not necessarily save you time, but to make your problem not so much of a mess. So it's integral, of 2x plus 4 from 0 to 2 minus the integral from 0 to 2. And then we've got x to the third dx. OK, so if your bounds are exactly the same, your letters are all the same, everything's all lined up, you can treat this like like terms. Now, if you want, you don't have to. You can totally just do this part of the problem and then do that part of the problem and subtract your two answers, you'll get the same answer. Or you can just slide this over and we can say the integral from zero to two, I'm subtracting x to the third. So this is negative x to the third plus two x plus four. And now you still have to go through and do your integration, all your stuff. But if the bounds are the same, your letters are all X's and stuff, you can just kind of treat it like algebra, make one thing out of it before you integrate. That's most likely how I'm going to do the problems because it kind of makes it one problem instead of two. Anyways, I'll be quiet. Take three minutes, two, three minutes, find an answer. Go.
Okay, uh, so let's take a look. So if we were to integrate this, you would have what? You're gonna add one, remember integrate I, increase the power. So we're gonna add one to the power. So this is negative X to the fourth over four plus two X squared over two. So just X squared plus four X with bounds of zero to two. Does anybody have any questions there? Okay, next up, we want to, so I'm gonna call this now negative one fourth, just write it a little nicer. Okay, and it's gonna be plug in the top minus plug in the bottom. So plug in the top minus plug in the bottom. So when it's zero, I always take a glance real quick and go, okay, that's gonna be zero, that's zero, that's zero. So we can quickly say that's all zero. We put two in, what are we gonna get? Two to the fourth is 16, and then take that times that, that's negative four plus two squared is four plus eight. So those are gonna cancel and gives you an eight. I'm coming up with eight for a final answer. Do we agree, disagree, any confusion? Okay, so it looks like we're good there. I just saw a question in chat. Let me see this. Can you integrate and then figure it out from which one has the later area? Grace, Katie, say that again. Larger area, okay. Um, yeah, depends, because these can also go underneath the x-axis which is gonna create a negative area. So you don't have to combine these. You just always have to make sure your setup is the top one minus the bottom one. And then whether you choose to make one integral or not, it's entirely up to you. But like you could have just done that whole problem, got an answer, that whole one got an answer, then subtracted the two, but the setup has to be top minus bottom. Eight is the area between the top and bottom, yes. Uh, Taylor, I have no idea. We would need a word problem for that. So if you guys don't mind, yell your questions out in public so people can hear what you're saying. Everybody's messaging me privately. Don't be shy. Just yell your stuff out. Um, the area between these two curves would be eight. Yes. And I have no idea. We don't have any units at the moment. We would need some sort of word problem to get us going with that. Um, Mr. Baker. Yes. Would you ever plug in the bounds beforehand if you can't combine them, or do you always do that after subtracting the integrals? You don't plug your bounds in until after you integrate. But in this situation, when we combine like term, will the bounds always be the same for both? Yeah. So it's going to be anytime you're doing area bounded, it can't be with different bounds because that wouldn't work. It's always going to be from something to something, and then you're just matching them up. Okay. Now that said, you can see a problem on the AP exam where they're like, we haven't really looked at one yet, but like you can, we're not there yet. When we come across one later in the month or year, I'll show you what I mean. But for right now, just assume the bounds are the same. Okay. All right, let's try one more. Let's see what we come up with. So same directions, I'm not writing all that out again. Okay, so we wanna find the area bounded from zero to two for the thing you're looking at.
what do we got for the top top function? What are we using? Our own natural log of e. No, no, well, I'm just just e to the x, right? Yeah. Okay, and then if you want, we can combine them. So is everybody good with e to the x being the top function? Let's start with that. If you plug in zero to both of these, e to the zero is one. This one's gonna give me zero. If we plug two into these, this is e squared. Don't know exactly what that is, but I know e is roughly 2.71. So 2.71 squared is gonna be more than two squared. So that's gonna make e my top function. Um, all right, so if we made this into one, this is e to the x minus x squared dx takes us over here at zero to two. And we're ready to integrate. So what's the integral of e to the x? Natural log. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Anytime you get confused, go back to, anytime you get confused with one, go back to the riddle. The riddle says the integral of f prime is equal to f. Whatever I put over here, I want to be able to take its derivative to get f. What am I putting over here to get e to the x? e to the x. e to the x, OK. Minus x to the third over 3 from 0 to 2. OK. Next, we want to plug our bounds in. So this would be uh, e squared minus, we put a two in, that's eight thirds, minus e to the zero minus zero. Okay, so this is now, we got to do better than this for an answer. This is e squared minus eight thirds minus, so that's gone, e to the zero is one, and I'm going to call that 3 over 3 because I'm going to need a common denominator. So now I'm getting e squared minus 11 thirds. Make sense? It's pretty much it for area bounded. There's not too much to it. You just got to, once you wrap your head around it. Does anybody have any questions on the idea of area bounded or anything we've talked about? Okay, I would be telling you at this point that that's going to be on your next test, but I can't really hold you accountable anymore with grades. So just know that that will pop up somewhere on the AP exam. Um, you'll be seeing it in practice tests, uh, practice problems. A lot of what we're going to be doing over the next 12 weeks is uh, practice stuff in class. A lot of these are going to be like two session things where like Tuesday, like tomorrow, for example, I'm going to be giving you like 10 problems in class to work on. And then like Wednesday, we'll go over them, stuff like that. So you'll see these problems in class when we're going over them. So last call, any questions on that? Okay. Are we, sorry, are we gonna get Delta Maths? Delta Maths, um, nah, I don't really think to be honest with you. I'm gonna post one, like a big one because like even when, uh, like a little later in the year, so like even when you finish a section, you can always go do more problems. So I'll get a really big one posted that you can always log on to and try some problems anytime you want. But um, as far as this next 12 weeks goes, you know, there's no homework. There's no, it's just, I'm going to be giving you stuff to do. You try your best to work on it and just stay as up to date with it as you can. Okay, and another question, sorry. Um, are you going to give us like a study guide that like has all the rules and stuff? Or... You mean before the AP exam? Yeah. Yes, I have a lovely seven or eight page crazy manual with all the important stuff that you will have access to before you take the AP exam. Okay, thank you. That sounds mm -hmm. good. Um, all right, next, let's, this will take two seconds for you to understand. We just never did one yet. All right, this is the graph of f of x and let's get some dimensions here all 
All right, so that's one, two, three, one, two, negative one. All right, so real quickly, let's sketch that out. And we are looking to find We're looking to find that the area under the curve of the graph that I'm given, you've been doing problems like this already. What's the only thing that's different about this one compared to some of the other ones we've done? Yeah, we got areas under the curve. So here's the deal. Anytime you're finding an area under the curve through geometry, that would be geometry. Over here, when you do integration, the math will work itself out for you. It'll tell you what's going on. But when you're doing a visual, you got to make sure that any area that's underneath, you make it negative. So whenever you find the area of this triangle, just find it like normal. This is two by two is four. Cut in half is two. Oops, it's underneath. I need a negative sign. So that's the only just that's different there. So go through and find an area under the curve for f of x from negative one to three. Mr. Baker, does it make sense to say that the area is negative or? Uh, yeah, so it's a total amount is what it is. So as of right now, it probably doesn't make the most sense. But whenever we start talking about a word problem, it can be um, like this function will represent the income of a store or something. So if you've got more stuff under the curve than above, that would be like the store lost money or whatever it is you're talking about is in the negative. Yeah. Right now, there's no context to this, so it's kind of hard to see. Mr. Baker, when we are doing this actual integration, like when we're splitting this stuff up, should we split up? Should we like make a triangle from um, from zero to one on the x-axis, and then like not go on the yeah on the x-axis, and then not go below, and then create a square right under? And then oh, oh, hold on. Oh, here's your areas. That's your area. Oh, that That's makes your... more sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we look at this triangle, it's going from negative one to one. So that's a width of two, height of two. This is a width of two, height of two. I didn't draw it the best, but those are the same triangles. So what'd you come up with for a final answer? I got zero. I did two. So this one up here would be two. That one down there is negative two. So with that in mind, we're coming up with an answer of zero. Um, any questions on that? Pretty easy. Okay, so that's area bounded. That's negative area. Next up, we touched on this earlier in the year, but then I let it go because I figured I didn't want to test you on it at the time, but we got to know it. We need to know all six trig derivatives. All six. So somewhere in your notes, we did this already. We just never really used them. So we're going to go through this again, and now we're going to start to use them. So we know we have sine, cosine, tangent. And this is going to be the original function. And what's it go to? Sine goes to cosine. No problem. Cosine goes to negative sine. And these are all supposed to have x's with them, but whatever. Tangent goes to, anybody remember without cheating? So uh, secant x squared. Good, secant squared. Guess I should put the x's in. All right, three down. And then we've got cosecant, secant, cotangent. <coughs> Okay, so we've got cosecant, secant, cotangent. 
cosecant goes to negative cosecant cotangent. Secant goes to secant tangent. And cotangent goes to negative cosecant squared. Okay, so as you're writing them down, remember I taught you to split your derivatives into these groupings. All right, so you do have to study these, memorize them, you gotta know them. Uh, they will pop up on the exam. So first two, I hope you know them by now. So that should be nothing there. Okay, the bottom two, they go to something squared. You got to know what it is, but then the bottom two go to something squared. The two on the right side go to a double term and the first half of the double term is itself. The first half of the double term is itself. Last and final clue, anything that starts with a C, its derivative is negative. Anything that starts with a C, its derivative is negative. So we've got these two over here that we know. The bottom two go to something squared. These two go to a double something, and the first half of the something is itself. Anything with a C goes to a negative. Okay, so take a second, write those down. All right, and let's try the following problem. Mm, no, nah, I'm changing my mind, sorry, hold on. Let's try. Yeah, let's try. Integrate the following. And let's put some bounds on this one. Pi over four and pi. Let's see how that works out. Feel free to ask questions as you're going. So I know that, well, actually think this question isn't going to apply but when you integrate e to the tan x it just stays e to the tan x like you don't do anything to the tan why are we integrating e to the tan x because it's two separate would you pick for would you pick for you oh i completely forgot to do that okay yeah so anytime you look at a integration problem if it doesn't look like something that like immediately snaps into your head we're heading right to e substitution Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so we should be looking at something here involving the letter U. So this is going to be U, DU, DX. Okay. So remember, U is always the thing that's in parentheses under the root, the thing with the trig function, or the thing that E is raised to. So you might have to play around with this a little bit, but the winner here ended up being let U be tangent X. And then if we take the derivative of tangent, we're going to get secant squared x dx. And then if we solve that for dx, that's going to be du over secant squared x. Okay. All right. So we want to go back now. You want to try to plug some of this in. So we've got the integral of secant squared x e to the u du over secant squared x. This should look good to you because we need to get this down to just something with u and du. Secant squareds are gonna cancel entirely and there's no fractions left to worry about. So now we're looking at the integral of e to the u du with bounds of pi over four to pi at which case we can now integrate this. What is the integral of e to the u du? e to the u plus one over u plus one. Mm, no, so it's gonna be, it's a good idea. So e to the u integrates the same exact way as e to the x. So it's just gonna stick around. So it's just gonna be e to the u from pi over four to pi. And then before we get to a point where we're plugging our bounds in, we got to plug in for u. So this is e to the tangent x from pi over four to pi. And now we want to toss our bounds in. So this is e raised to tangent of pi minus e raised to the tangent of pi over four. All right, so talk to me guys. What is the tangent of pi? Zero. And e to the zero is one. Minus, what is tangent of pi over four? One. And e to the one is just e. The answer to this problem, it's messy, but that's what it is, is one minus e. How is um, tan u? Say again. How is tan x u? How is it? Well, I mean, you only have two choices. So our choices are tangent or secant squared. And usually it's the thing that e is raised to or something to that extent. But like, let's just say we didn't do this. So I'm going to cross this out here. Let's pretend we never got to that. And let's try it the other way. And you'll see that we get stuck. So worst case scenario, we try it the other way. So would you agree the only other thing I could do is I could have wrote this as secant x squared, right? So if we go that route, that's gonna be u is secant squared x. But now right off the bat, when I try to take that derivative, I don't know what the derivative of secant squared is. I know the derivative of secant, but in my mind, I'm already saying, oh, this is a mess. So even if you go a step further and actually figure it out, because that's really this. So the derivative of that would be two, keep it, not two, drop it, derive it, which is the derivative of secant, secant tangent. And then you're just sitting there looking at this and saying, what am I doing with this? Hopefully you've given up at that point and said that can't be right because that would just be this huge thing in here. And then it would just, it wouldn't take you anywhere. Um, so that the only other option we have left is tangent X. And then as you start to go through it, it works its way out pretty nicely. When you find um, what U is like on the other integrating problems, when we put this stuff in the parentheses and then figured out what it was, didn't we leave the power behind and come back to it later? So wouldn't it just have been like secant X and then you could have done something with it. Say that again. <laughs> so 
in other problems, like when we had square roots or whatever, we rewrote it as to a power. And then if I'm remembering correctly, we left that power behind. And then when we came back, we like substituted it back with the power. So couldn't you do that with seek an X? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I got what you're saying. All right. So yeah, we could try that. So uh, if we rewrote that problem as secant, yeah, I got I got exactly what you're saying now. Uh, e to the tan x dx. Okay. So we would have u du dx. Got it. Okay. So that's secant x is what we're saying, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we take that derivative. And that's going to be secant tangent. And then that's dx. So that makes dx du over secant tangent. OK, so here's how you'll know that this didn't work. So now it's time to plug in. And we've got u squared e to the tan x du over secant x tangent x. So you'll know that it's no good because in order to integrate u substitution, I've got to be left with just u oh. and du stuff. And I mean, first off, these can't cancel, but even in a world where they could, I still have this secant thing stuck around. So there's no way to get that. There's like every problem doesn't work with u substitution. It's just, I'm giving you a whole bunch of ones that do in order for it to be u substitution eligible. When you go through the process, it's gotta be something that whenever you're done canceling, all we have left is U and DU. So that's, this is actually one of the problems that separates uh, calculus AB from calculus BC. Or like in our, our curriculum, if we're gonna integrate something, you're either gonna have something that's easy or you're gonna have something that was a U substitution problem and there's no other path that you have to worry about. Whereas, Obviously, there's other things that exist between easy and u substitution that wouldn't fit that. And then those are a couple of the other types of problems in this particular lesson that they get into in BC. Um, so yeah, that's all you're ever going to see is something where you immediately know what you're doing or u substitution is going to work. And then for u substitution to work, this is all got to cancel itself out at the end. So if you pick seek, and that's an OK guess, but once you get to this place, then you got to throw it away and go back and say, well, I guess it wasn't secant. I should try tangent. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? Okay. Uh, I recognized immediately that it was just e to the tan x, um, just because we'd just been talking about that kind of thing. Right. So if I, or if anyone realizes that they don't have to do substitution, we can just totally skip that bit. Say that again. So I, I realized that the um, when you integrate it, you would get e to the tan x. So I skipped the whole substitution. You knew right away that if you integrated that, you would get e to the tan x? Yeah. You might be more advanced than I am. Then how'd you know that? Um, Because I remembered that the rule is you have to multiply. <laughs> you, did, you, you figured out this right away and said this, and you picked up that if we did e to the tan x over there. I see what you're saying. So yeah. e to the tan x, the derivative of e to the tan x is e to the stuff, stuff prime. Yeah, yeah, you're on a whole different level of thought at that point. Go for it. Okay. 99 out of 100 people are going to go through uh, u substitution to get there. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't realize that because we just talked about that. Yeah, that's fair. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, I can't teach it that way because most people aren't going to see that. All right, cool. Let's try one more u substitution problem. See what we come up with. Let's try. Let's try this. See what we get. So we're back to sines and cosines.
Okay, does anybody have any ideas? What'd you have to do to get somewhere with this? Uh, signing sign is you. Uh, yeah, so think of this problem right here. Think of it like this. And now you can aim for the stuff in parentheses, right? So some of these now you're starting to see, you got to rewrite them. You got to play with them a little bit to get somewhere. So think of this as sine X in parentheses quantity squared. And so now we got U DU DX, okay? So the U is gonna be sine. That's gonna give me a DU of cosine X DX. It's gonna give me a uh, DX of DU over cosine X, okay? And then we toss our stuff in. So this is gonna be U squared cosine X du over cosine x you should be happy to see all that things cancel you know you've got it right so cancel cancel and now we're just going to integrate and get u to the third over three plus c final answer one third sine x to the third plus c no problem with that could easily be written like this as well depends on the problem, but these two mean the same thing. What do you think? Questions, thoughts? All right, uh, for right now, uh, this first week at least, I'm gonna try to keep this to 60 minutes because I'm imagining you guys are gonna have a mess acclimating to your new classes. So I don't wanna keep you here forever. Uh, these will get closer to 90 minutes or so as we get closer to the AP exam. Uh, but for right now, awesome to see 40 something of you guys in this, hopefully 40 something of the other ones come tonight and we will keep on going. So tomorrow I will see you guys at either 3.30 or at uh, 7.30 and we'll pick up from here. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, guys. So much. Have a good day. Bye. Thank All right. See, see ya. Thank you. Thank you. Bennett, stick around for a minute. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Baker. Yes, what's up? So I just want to like, I just want to be, um, so it's just basically the same class, but different times, right? Yeah, so I mean, there's no grade book. So there's not going to be any Tuesday tests anymore in terms of like multiple choice assessments. Uh, but you're going to take a lot of quote, quote tests. It's just, we're going to grade them together in class and kind of go over it. Um, no, I mean, like, so you know how we have two options? It's the same. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tonight's the same. Literally, some, I'm doing the same exact thing at 730. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, Mr. Baker, I just wanted to say I didn't have to substitute for the last one either. Did you know that one too? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but that means you're learning calculus at a pretty high rate. That's good. <laughs> okay, bye. See ya. All right, uh, all right, Bennett, what's the story here now? What do I need to, I'm gonna write this down here. What do I, I wanna post this on Remind and in Canvas so people can look this up. What am I telling people? So this, is, this is awesome. My idea was to just make a Google Classroom page. Okay. Um, with the different, like with all the videos on it. Uh, all right, so Google Classroom, do we need an ID or something for this or what's the story? Yeah, so basically all you have to do for Google Classroom if you have a Google email account, um, is just enter code and you'll be automatically signed up for the class. So it's a non-ACPS email, yeah, right? Okay. Non you uh, use the school email. Okay. What's the code? Um, it should be two T Q U E five P. Um, and that's pretty much all you need. So then, so if I post this, people people will know what this means. Yeah, and then, I mean, I can also send you on Remind like a little thing explaining it, but I was also thinking, um, like obviously I explained it to the people today in class and I was thinking of just going on to the 731 just like real quick, just for the beginning to say what Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna post this on Canvas and I'll post it in Remind. And then, yeah, if you want, hop on at 730 tonight and we'll just talk about it real quick before I start yeah, the class. That's what I was gonna do. And then uh, in terms of the videos, I'm just gonna record them and then see like how the recording works. Hopefully it didn't pick up any of like my background noise, but I don't think it would. And then um, I took notes on like what we what we did. So I'm going to label them with the the topics. That way, when, when people want to read yeah. it in the year, they can go back and look at it from that standpoint. That's, well. that's awesome. Uh, 
Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, let me know how it turns out. Check out the upload and then we'll talk at 730 and go from there. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Thanks. All right, thanks, buddy. See ya. See ya.